Welcome to Authenticity Unleashed. I'm Pam Rader, and I'm here today with the fabulous Doria Ramanula. Doria's got a really amazing bio. She sent it to me, and I, I'd like to say that, first of all, I think it's far too humble. <laughs> Doria is a woman of color, Métis, and white. She embraces all of her many cultures. She's been in social services for over 15 years, hosting a multitude of positions, including starting on a beautiful entrepreneurship journey a year ago. She believes in empowering all around her, as her belief is there is no community without unity. She's employed as UBCO's community engagement facilitator under the Faculty of Management with a full portfolio. She's passionately dedicated to serving all humans alongside their healing journey and hold a position as a board member for this space, for this space belongs to you and a board chair for Mamas for Mamas. What a great cause that is. During her spare time, she was nominated in the top 10 of Fab Over 40 in support of <laughs> cancer awareness. Yay. She volunteers her time far and wide. She co-founded the National Suicide Awareness Day in 2004, later to go on to be published in the Journal of Dental Education for this cause in 2014. Her philanthropic pursuits have won her several awards for her Healthy Living documentary, along with a Soar Optimist Women's Opportunity Award in 2007. She's honored to work with such an amazing team at UBCO, and it has been the best position she's ever had in her life. Wow. Even with all of those accolades, that's too humble for who you are. You are yeah. a force of nature. The moment I met you, I thought, this woman is the real deal, real as fuck. <laughs> and yes, we can I, swear. Okay, and let's I get love into you. it. <laughs> this is this podcast is about people who are living their truest, aligned lives, mess and all. And mm -hmm. I want to hear about your story. Um, my my intention in this is that we're going to leave breadcrumbs for other people to follow, for people to accept okay. their failures and the mess along the way, and to mm -hmm. recognize it's okay if we screw things up. And, and it's also okay to start many lives. And I know that you're a woman who's started many lives. So yes. tell me a little bit about your journey, Doria, from growing up to where you are now. Oh, it's long and we'd probably need more of an hour. So I'll give you the Coles notes <laughs> anyways. Oh, first, great. Pam, I want to start off by saying I feel really um, honored. And uh, I always like to start my day or anything that I'm doing new with deep gratitude. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to start off with saying I'm in deep gratitude for you for having the uncomfortable conversations. And for more than that, for being a trailblazer and for being authentic. Um, I think right now as a society, we are so diseased, diseased, as you know, we are distant from our true selves. And because of that, that's what's happening. And when we have conversations like this, even if we just start the conversation, we start to reconnect and the disease becomes closer and closer until there is no more disease. So people don't realize that it's not always necessary to do the big things. As you know, from your yoga practice and anything else that you do mindfully, you start with little things and it builds and grows. Mm -hmm. So I just, I, 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 I'd be remiss to say that I, can, I cannot say enough um, for gratitude, not only for how we met prior and you, you bended your ear and you leaned into um, what I was trying to do. And then you came full circle and showed back up and here we are. So um, kudos to you for having the courage to step into authenticity. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for that um, wonderful, um, I laugh because I just think it's just stuff, you know, the universe puts stuff in front of me and I, and I show up. So I never look at it as that I've done a lot. I just look at it as I, I showed up and I paid attention because too many times I didn't. Um, and I love, there was, there's a question you're going to have um, back that you had said you might mention and, and you mentioned about being, being nudged into your authenticity. And I will say that I've, I'm a Capricorn, so I don't get nudged for anything. I get pushed. 
and, and then I listen and then I'm there and, and people always go, oh, wow, you, le you leapt. And I go, well, not really. <laughs> it was really pushed. But yeah, what I, I will I say I don't is wait for the whisper of the universe to tap me on the shoulder. I usually wait for the two by four to the head and it's messy. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right. You, know, yeah. you know how people say, oh, leap in the net will appear. I'm like, oh, somebody pushed me and I just oh, prayed. Okay. 100%. It just looks like we're leapers, but really. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So I, so I love how gentle you were about the nudge, but I'm like, yeah, no, I had to be pushed. But um, just to give you sort of an example, um, and I'll, and this ties right into what you're speaking about, uh, that if you're not living authentically, you, you feel very unwell. So I grew up in a middle class um family but um we presented well because my mom was she worked at the royal winnipeg ballet she was a, a dancer a ballet dancer so you know wow. coming from that physicality that um there was always you know you show up whether you're broken or bleeding <laughs> essentially mm -hmm. right so it was that that force of will and because of that then i became we grew up that way and then i became a runner and then i became a model and then i did all of these other things but in that i lived this um, eclectic lifestyle, um, but in the sort of more modern, but as we know, just because you're in a higher threshold or you're with people who present well, doesn't always mean that there aren't um, the underbelly, shall we say. So oh, I, I love it. A lot I just around... think the people that present well often are just better at hiding their shit. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, so, you know, I, you know, as you, as you up rank up, uh, there is a lot of, uh, uh, nor I'll say this, it's not as much now, but before it was normalized alcoholism. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, uh, oh, I only do drugs on the weekend and this and that. So I grew up with these, this chaos and this crisis. And when my mom was 10, she got sober, um, which was wonderful. Uh, but sobriety is just one part of it, as I'm sure you know, because then most often, not always, um, people go into relapse. So my mom relapsed right before my son who I have, who's 21 now, uh, before he was born. And it was quite a horrific thing to go from being 10. To, I had my son when I was 33. So she was sober that whole time. And then she relapsed and relapsed into like serious downtown east side, crystal meth, drink, let's go, oh, whoa. full tilt boogie. Whoa. So I, uh, what yeah, that, so what I that ran. Do you, what did, like, at, she'd been sober all that time. And can I just ask, yes. like, you probably thought it was over, it's done. Uh, you know? Well, and here's the thing. I was going to Al-Anon and ACOA before they were even a thing, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, and, and, and I was going to AA meetings at 10 years old when they didn't have those other other wonderful stepping stones and healing modalities for us. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. here I was sitting at 10 years old in an AA meeting, right? You know, just trying to support my mom and everything. And yes, you're right. Um, because they didn't talk about relapse back then. Um, right. And that is, it's definitely part of your journey. What happened is that I, I thought it was all okay. And then she relapsed and it was bad. Um, uh, and um, soul, soul crushing also because yeah. at a certain time you do, A, you think it's over, B, you think they're okay. C, you're, you're now thinking it's a safe time to un- ravel and unpeel all of the chaos and crisis that you grew up from right so and then you just that brought sort this of little human into the world that you're likely hoping that your mother would be able to enjoy and she, there's the heartbreak of her missing out on what is now the most important piece of your life exactly and so what i'll tell you is um that's the one and only time i gave an ultimatum because the child is involved now right mm -hmm. so and i had to start um exercising those boundaries that i had learned to, to hopefully utilize one day um right. so so she did she did get sober um but it was it was a lot it was um no one ever tells you about that and it and especially when you know, it was alcoholism and back in the day, something else. And now it's this heavy, heavy drug that takes you to your knees. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it just, it just, it just shifted a lot of things for me, but I saw her come around and it was just a, a, a beautiful way to, for us to have a healing. And I'll talk about um, Hemi's house because that's who it's named after um, of the recovery center. But just, yeah, was that just like a, a pivotal moment for you to, to kind of walk your path more authentically too, like just like going through that healing well, with your mom. 
Well, here's here's what I will tell you. So I I and because you said to be authentic, I'm going to just share it all with you. So when I was uh, 25, I was married to a gold medal dental surgeon, and I don't know if you know anything about dental surgeons, but um, they have a high rate of suicide. Mm-hmm. So uh, sure, I should actually back up. So when I was 18, um, the man that I lived with, a uh, famous artist, hung himself. Then when I was 25, oh. my husband, who's a dental, was a dental surgeon. Uh, shot himself in the head then and I was there witnessing it so a year and a half later I took my own life or tried to Mm -hmm. and when I woke up looking into my mother's eyes I said to myself if I'm stuck here this is this is how I looked at it because I had gotten the message three times I said if I'm stuck here I cannot be the only person in pain and in this much pain and there was in no way or shape or form that I wanted to pass away I just didn't want to feel the pain anymore So there was two pivotal times in my life where I realized that I'm not an addict, but when you're in so much pain because of accumulated unhealed trauma, because I believe that's the, that's why people anesthetize. The only Mm -hmm. reason they anesthetize, they don't wake up and say, Hey, I want to put a a needle in my arm or Hey, I don't want to choose to be here. It's an accumulation of not being heard, not being seen, not being validated, not being understood. And then trauma on top of trauma and then having to go and present well every day. That's the disease. That's the disconnect. I actually think it's the, when we present well, like we, we as human beings are resilient and we can tolerate trauma, but the greatest yeah. trauma is the denial and the sweeping it under the rug and the pretending yes. that we've got all our shit together. And right. that is like, that's anger. Tur- like you, you turn on yourself, you're Absolutely. abandoning yourself. And that's the most yes. painful separation of all. Preach. You've just said it. You've just said it. So that's where I went. Oh, okay. So I can't be the only one in pain. No one's talking about this. I'm sure that no one's had the exact experience that I've had. I took my chicken legs (laughs) because I was so scared. And I said, if I have to be here, I've got to speak this. I have Mm -hmm. to tell my truth. And so I know you were at the Vitality when I was sharing that here we are, 2004, I co-founded it. 20 years later, now we've got Bell Talk Days and all of this. And I love, I love the traction that we've made. But we haven't come far enough because we know that 2,500 people died of overdose last year just in BC alone. That is way too many folks. We know people are dying in Canada every eight seconds from suicide. So there is more to be done. So, But to bring it back down to what I was saying was that I was like, if no one's talking about it, we have to share the warning signs. We have to uh, gather data. We have to speak to folks and we have to save our, our newest generation that's coming up. So I spent forever, it feels like. It was about a year and a half of just going through school districts, uh, municipalities, the province, all of this to say, hey, if we don't speak about it, it's going to happen. Not that if we if we speak about it, it's going to happen. Does that even make sense to you? Yeah. So I went on this, I, right? <laughs> Sorry, like... For as smart as y'all are and educated, we, like we get your head are, out of your ass. Um, we grew up, our generation was raised by parents who swept things under the rug and passive mm-hmm. aggressive uh, was the only move. <laughs> and, uh, yep. Right. And we didn't, we don't talk, we don't speak of things that don't look good to others. Right. Um, and then but, they're shocked by inter, intergenerational trauma going, what? Right. And you're like, pardon me? Of course, yeah. he may not have heard about it, but he's carrying it. Because I'm carrying it and you're carrying it. Do you know what I mean? Do you think you had something in you, Doria? Like, I know that was a pivotal moment when you said, I can't be in so much pain, but you know, not it. Like if I'm, if I'm in this much pain, there must be other people and I've got to do something. Mm -hmm. But you know, how many people go through that and don't do something? What, what do you think it is about you? Uh, You know, again, it's, it's the stubbornness in me. I, I, it works both good in good (laughs) And if not, where I was like, I had no fucking clue what I was doing. I don't even know why I was shouting it from the rooftops because it's not a fucking pretty thing to say. I had to do so much work, inner work on abandonment issues and why I wasn't worthy and how come people don't love me and why do they leave me? And I, you know, it's just recently that I've come to that maybe I'm a gift for them to leave when I'm around that. And that's just come in the last six months. Do you know that? That's so beautiful. 
maybe it was safe up. enough. Maybe I gave them so little judgment and mm -hmm. cared about them so much that they felt safe enough to exit this world with me. That's what I'm going to hold on to because that's how much work I had to do to come you know full what? circle. Right? Doria, every single thing that happens, I mean, we can take it back to Viktor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning. It's all what we right. make things mean. And I am a big proponent of saying, you know, I could say that, you know, my son was an addict and I could say, oh, it was happening to me and it was terrible and all that. Mm -hmm. And then that would be the experience of my life. Or I could say, he was my greatest teacher and propelled me, catalyzed me to do some deep healing I didn't even know I needed to do. Now, mm. both of those things could be equally true. But yeah. fuck yeah, I'm going to hang on to the thing that makes my life better and, and that helps me move yes. forward and helps maybe others heal. We get to choose. So I love that story for you. I love it. Right? It's beautiful. It's empowering. And who's to say that it's not exactly what it is? Well, and I, and I believe that now, like, you know, but when you're younger, like I was 20, so that happened around 27. Those are your years of like, I've got the house, I've got the, you know, the fast car, I'm doing well, da, 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 da. especially in Vancouver. It's, it was a little, mm -hmm. little competitive. I, yeah. it, it's, it seems less cliquey and competitive here, but I don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I'm just saying you, you're, you're really uncovering your identity. So to, to, to be that raw and open in front of the world was very scary for me, but it was, I almost felt like I didn't have a choice. I looked at it as I can't stand to see another human die. And if I can share something of my horrificness and my fuckery of life yeah. right now at that yeah. point, um, whether, whether, you know, and it's all about perception, right? You know, whether real or perceived, that mm -hmm. was what was real for me. And so if I didn't share it, um, it goes back to where you were saying about societal it's this disease. It's this unconnection. I would have imploded in some other way. Who right. knows? I could have become an addict. It's in my genealogy, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't, we don't know where that came from, but here's what I will say is by sharing my truth, no matter how scary it was, no how fucking uncomfortable. And at times just brought me to my knees because I was humiliated and abandoned and I felt fucked over. But I knew that if I didn't say it and speak my truth to even one person, I was going to be really sick and I wow. could harm myself and others. So and I didn't know to, to what extent, but I knew it was going to be true. Sorry, go it ahead, Pam. It seems to me that you have a, an inner listening. But you, do you, do you, would you say you're a spiritual person, Doria? Did you always have a connection to something greater than yourself? Absolutely. Now, have mm -hmm. I always listened? Yeah, absolutely not. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. but I will tell you, no, my, 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 and I don't know, I, I'm going to use the word spirituality because that's, that's resonates with me, but I, 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 I listen to source and mm -hmm. I don't care what you call source. It can be anything, but please, you know, I always say, thank God I'm not in charge. <laughs> right. Oh my God. So I say I hold to galaxies source. together can mind the small details of my life. <laughs> Star Wars ain't got nothing on me. Okay. Let me tell you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but what I'm saying is when you listen to source, whether you call it the universe, earth, mother earth, whatever you call it, there's something innately, incredibly knowingly that if you just get silent enough and do this, right? Head, heart, mind, and body together mm -hmm. and pay attention, pay attention. It, it's speaking to you in so many ways. You know, when people say, oh, that was a deja vu or that was a, oh, I, something, some, oh, that's really synchronistic. Yes. It's the universe really trying to get your attention. And the clearer mm. it is, the louder it is, is the more we need to pay attention. And I didn't always, I will say there was several times in my life where the trajectory of my life could have gone differently had I been more in tune. But now I, 99% of the time I try and tune in. And when I don't know is when I go even slower. And I, and I'll stop my world if I have to, in order to really pay attention, because I've had too much go on for me to now deny that. Yeah. That whatever that is, well, let's just go with that. experience that, that, um, when I'm off my path, when I, when I've been mm -hmm. living in a way that's not authentic for me, yeah. um, that there's also a disconnect with source. 
I'm not yes. paying attention to those whispers, to those messages. But to me, it strikes me that a 10 year old girl going to an AA meeting and then like all the things that you managed to do, um, you are someone who's connected to source. And when you're connected to source, it seems as though you're highly aligned with your purpose. And when we're highly aligned with our purpose, I think, and I'd love for you to speak to this. I think that that is the thing that gets us over the other thing that keeps us from being in purpose, which is fear of what other people think. Yeah. So and tell, I, me about, I, tell me about how that showed up for you and, and oh, it, how it you showed got up. over that. It showed up hugely. Um, and I'll say I was a, cause here's what happens when you grow up in chaos and crisis and, and addiction of any kind. And I, I'm going to repeat that when you grow up in addiction of any kind, mm -hmm. you grow up in chaos and crises. And so you're doing the matrix all day. So I became, so usually it's a rebel or it's a people pleaser. You go, mm -hmm. you get one of the two. Okay. And you know or, this so or well. Both, so that's what, which I, or I both. Love yeah, you can, you can the two. I, I'm sure I vacillated between them. <laughs> Depends yeah. on which crowd I was in front of. Right. Yeah. hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So, so, but for me, I, the, the bigger part of me at the beginning of my life was a people pleaser and a matrix because I felt like, and this is how much pressure is put on you as a adult child or a child of an alcoholic and an addict is because I always thought that if I could walk on eggshells and if I could know what you needed before you even knew you needed it and then mm -hmm. fulfill that, whatever mm -hmm. that looked like, then we were golden. Mm -hmm. So I spent most of my beginning life doing that. Mm -hmm. So I presented very well. I was always perfect weight. I was the fastest in the Vancouver Olympic club. I was, I always excelled, but I spent many hours, sometimes, you know, 18, 24, 36 hours excelling, whatever it was I had to present at that time, because I couldn't show up with my underbelly. I couldn't show up with a few pounds overweight. I couldn't show up with a, a, a root canal that I got to go get next week. I couldn't yeah. show up that way because that was not what was asked of me or required from me. Um, and then of course I lost two people and lost my, almost lost myself mm -hmm. and then had a child and my mom relapsed. So by the time this, my son came in at 33, I said, I cannot fucking play your game no more. Yeah. I like, I just got, I just, I got it. I, I have to show up authentically. I have to tell my truth. And, and I know you've heard this before, Pam, but I say, you know, I walk in, I know I'm a unicorn. I know I'm a unicorn, but I go and I put my, I try to put my horn down, out come my wings and glitter fucking goes everywhere. So you see me anyway. So what am I going to yeah. do? Here, here I am. So now I've decided to just walk in as that unicorn and ask, do you mind please making some space for me? Because yeah. here I am. I love that. Do you mind just making some space for me? Now, that's such a, an interesting thing because I recall as a child, uh, my, my mother would say to us, like, we weren't allowed to ask for water at someone's house if we were thirsty, you know, and I know she was trying to make us polite. Mm -hmm. And that was so ingrained in me that I did that to my kids too. Don't ask for anything when you're, you know, and, and we have this distorted view of like where we teach our children to play small, to fit in, and to disregard our own needs. Yes. So I love this of like being in the practice of saying, here I am, and it's not my job to make myself small for you, but I will ask that you make space for me. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and can't we make space for everyone? Right. right? Well, if we, make we all space just for asked and, 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 uh, you know, of course if the answer is yes, I'll make space for you. Yes. I want some of that glitter on me. Right. I, I'm hoping <laughs> some of your unicorn rubs off on me. I want right. that. Right. I, uh, yeah. And I think that when you live in that way, you become an inspiration and a, um, a game changer. And I mean that, um, in terms of People are, and we're, we're going to use the literal term here. People are dying, as you've yes. just said, to be authentic. When they are forced to be something other than who they are, they are dying, mm -hmm. whether by suicide or by drugs or whatever, or just slowly death by a dying, thousand cuts. Yes. Dying to be authentic. This is what people are dying because of they're living inauthentically for a multitude of reasons. Yeah. So when someone like you with your beautiful unicorn horn and your wings and glitter <laughs> comes walking into a room and you are unapologetically you, 
and you are fiercely um, protective of the underdogs and you mm -hmm. are uh, outspoken about the things that matter to you. What you do, and I don't know that you realize this, uh, maybe you do, but you give people permission to do the same because someone mm. has to go first. Right. Someone you know, and I, so, I thought it was a character flaw, Pam. I'm not going to lie. You know, I, I've tried so hard to fit in and, and, and I'll just, I'll go back to this because I don't think people also understand there's all, I know it sounds crazy, but it's black history month. So I'm going to, I'm going to pull it out. I'm pulling it out. I'm love talking it. about it. I love I, it. Because I am half black and half white. I also, there's a hierarchy in our black culture mm -hmm. that if you're a certain color black in different shades, then you fit in. But when you're high yellow, which I'm called mm -hmm. is you don't fit in anywhere. So again, coming from addiction and it's many, uh, uh, here's what I will say. Love addicts. I think they're the best people in the fucking world. They're the most exciting, authentic, and living in their true selves. I, I just, I feel their pain. Is mm -hmm. But what I will say is I, because they, they tell the truth. But mm -hmm. what I will say is when you, when you grow up and you're not sure where you fit in and you've got some, lots of generational trauma, and then you grow up in addiction, you come to think that the only way that you'll be accepted is to present well. And I did that for so long and I made it so, so good at it that I didn't realize how disconnected and diseased I was mm -hmm. um, until I had to do that long healing journey of why would you want to take your life? What is this about? And I realized this is what it's about. It's all of these accumulative things of me saying, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, when I was screaming inside to say fuck no yeah. but no no yeah. I don't want to kiss that uncle no I don't feel comfortable here no I don't fit in no I don't understand please explain mm -hmm. it to me no I don't get it mm -hmm. no why I was always scared to ask those questions and I would <sighs> right mm -hmm. and I would press and push down and negate and annihilate any of those feelings that were truly valid and it was just the little girl in me saying I just I just want to understand more I just want to be able to say no or I just want to be okay not going or not fitting in or why can't I just ask these uncomfortable questions and it, without everybody looking at me like I've lost my ever loving mind right right and so the, I think the gift of me almost dying, my mom relapsing, and then the gift of a child, a son, mm -hmm. I couldn't, there was nothing in me that could be silent anymore. I just, right. I, I couldn't. And I had to go on this journey of, of you know, I lost, I lost a job once because I was too outspoken and too, I know I was right, but it doesn't matter. Right. Do you know what I mean? Now yeah. I get it, but, yeah. but you lose a lot of things. Um, I, I never was too disliked, but I also, as soon as I started speaking my truth, I, I saw that people became highly uncomfortable. And what I had to learn is, Hey, my side of the street is clean. I am clean. I am yeah. telling the truth. I'm not lying. I'm in right relationship with who I am and what I am and what my purpose is. Cause it takes a long time to find your purpose. You know, my son's 21 and he's, he's having a bit of a hard time. And I said, Oh, my, my love, just explore and be unapologetic and you know, you'll, is you'll figure it out. Go something ahead. that people talk about a lot, purpose. And I think that there's this whole inauthentic movement around purpose out there. Mm -hmm. My belief is that the purpose of our lives is to become the best version of ourselves and to share that with the world, period. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so to me, these catalysts, these difficult obstacles that happen, we have an opportunity to get knocked over by them and keep playing small and say, I'm the victim and all these things happen. And, or we have the opportunity to say, how am I going to use, use this to become more authentic, more generous, more loving, more um, of a contribution to the world? And so I think, and I think you're exactly right. Your son's 21. They don't even have a frontal lobe yet. Who the fuck? I know. 25. Yeah. <laughs> I said, who's let, telling them that they 25, have to okay, kid? You know what, Doria? When I went to university, yep. I was going to become a teacher. 
Now I am a teacher in many ways, but yes. I was going to go be an elementary school teacher. And um, about a year in, I realized I don't even like other people's kids. I'm just right. going to say that out loud. I don't even like other people's <laughs> kids. And so I was like, what the hell am I doing becoming a, <laughs> so I quit right? university. Good for <laughs> you. <laughs> right. So like, we have no business like deciding what to, you know, our purpose is at that age. Maybe as, as a society, we could say, let's help kids explore. Let's yes. help them find who they're not, what yes. feels better to them, what, um, you know, give well, them Pam, skills to discover what you're doing here by having a platform for people to be real as mm -hmm. soon as we make it normal to be okay warts underbelly whatever show up and just we're going to celebrate you because you're human you take your your very breath says that you are of value to be here Mm -hmm. As soon as we start celebrating and embracing and being grateful for that, yeah. then we've changed the trajectory of it. And that's what you're doing right here. And it seems so small, but that's where we, that's the only way change can be made. It has to be small because we're too hard headed as humans. <laughs> don't give it to me fast because we get it, but then we don't, how do we implement it? But when we implement real small changes, as you know, in your yoga practice, move your big toe. Yeah. Right. You start with your big toe, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And then the rest will follow. Yeah. So I think that's what needs to happen here because clearly we don't like to move too fast as humans or we would have made some more change, but maybe this is how the sustainable and the long lasting change is made, but you're giving a platform for folks to be authentic and to come and to celebrate it. So now we're not just saying we're putting up with it. Yeah. We're right. Right. Yeah. Celebrating. We're not just saying we're, we're not just putting up with, we're celebrating it. We're embracing it. We're encouraging you and we're asking you to, we're inviting conversation. Come on. And Come you know, on. there's only like, we're, we're programmed in our subconscious mind to want to fit in because that equals, uh, you know, to some degree, not being ousted by the tribe. Right. And, um, the story that you just shared about, you know, the, the not uh, about the different, uh, hierarchy in, yes. in, um, with, with color mm -hmm. is, uh, is really interesting because if you don't feel like you belong to any tribe, you're always on high alert and you're training your nervous system to constantly be in fight or flight, being ready yeah. to be rejected, which is the fundamental like human fear. So right? you're living a life in fear all the time. Like Pam, I don't even think I have a parasympathetic nerve left. Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard it grows back, but I'm yeah. telling you, <laughs> it's, it might've said, Hey Doria, we're good. We're going to tap out. Just yeah. let you go. <laughs> but yeah. I swear to God, you're right. And always on this, like, um, as you lean into someone, yeah. always wondering, is this okay? Will they, will I be accepted? Will, right. will, you know, do, how much do I have to filter my verbiage? How, right. how eloquent do I need to be today? And that's a lot of fucking work. It's it exhausting. Is. And you know what it's I want to say about that? So that our listeners have a, a real pathway. When we are in those situations, and I, I'm just going to presence this for everybody listening, that I'm the whitest girl that ever lived. I have blonde hair, blue eyes. I am like the like white girl from Norway. And I a beautiful seat at every table in humanity for me. And I have no business commenting on anything to do with being of color other than what I've witnessed and generous people have shared with me. Uh, I'm just trying to imagine because I think all of us feel like we don't belong to some right. degree, but I'm trying to imagine how much like extra layers there are of that. And my friend, Joe Fox dreamer, who is part white and part indigenous, he's got blue eyes. And he said the same thing. He said, I wasn't an Indian. I don't belong yep. there. And the white people said I didn't belong to them. Yep. And I wasn't in the Eskimo. And that's his words. I know we're not supposed yep. to say that, but that's what no, he so, says. That's okay. And I said, well, Joe, Maybe you weren't meant to belong to any one individual culture because you came to show us that we belong, all of us belong to each other. Mm. And I love that. And I think the tool that I want to kind of share around this is that we're so busy feeling that we don't fit in and that we don't belong and 
um, that we, we gather up all these external sources to get our, our esteem from. So there's other based esteem. When yes. someone else says I'm worthy, then I must be worthy. Yeah. And then we have attribute based esteem. I'm more because I'm kind and I'm nice and I, you know, and I'm, I'm a good person. So therefore right. I'm worthy. And then there's achievement based esteem, which is I am worthy because I achieve. And I can see through what you've shared in your life, you know, you relied heavily on attribute and achievement based yeah. esteem because you didn't have that deep knowing of your inner worth. Yes. It's when we start to belong to ourselves that we heal. Mm. No sweeter words have been said. Yeah. I'm telling you. And it's, and it's so true. And it, it, and what people don't understand is it's not, it's not, a, it's not a destination. <laughs> this shit's a journey. <laughs> Let me tell Whoa. you, put your seatbelt on. It's going to be a bumpy ride, but we're going to get there. We're going to, yeah. we're going to make it happen because yeah. the more that you uncover who you really are and what, and it doesn't matter not what you came here to be, but who you came to show the world and to show up every day. When you have that, then there's not too much that can rock your world, right? Like yeah. you might have a little like, oh, so and so, Susie said something, so and so at Starbucks, right? But yeah. it, it, you go like this. All of a sudden, it's like, yeah, it's that, that that's background noise. Mm -hmm. But when you show up authentically you start to heal the gener the intergenerational trauma. You start to heal your trauma. You don't want to anesthetize anymore, whether it's sex, gambling, drugs, alcohol, bad dates, you name it. There's just a list Instagram, of them, right? Netflix. Thank you, right? You know what I mean? Not yeah. get, you can't get off your phone, right? Like, and your yeah. child's looking right in you, deeply in your eyes saying, I would like to connect with you now. Yeah. But you can't make the leap. Yeah. Right. So whatever that looks like, however we anesthetize and that shifts, they're interchangeable as you know, as well. Right. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You're like, Oh, I got over the Instagram thing and now I got the sex thing. Shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> or I got the gambling or I got, mm -hmm. you, who knows what it is we because squeeze we're squeeze the balloon animal. We get one part in and then another part right. pops Thank out. Thank you. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's ever changing, which is great because it never makes life dull. But when you tap into your authentic self, those things now, naturally start to dissipate in a way where you can get some space arm's length from it so that you can take a deep collective breath to drop back into your heart and remember what it is you want to do because whenever we're we come from this deeply grounded and as you know as a yoga instructor when you come from a deeply grounded place there's you can't make knee-jerk reactions you can't think from that 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 uh what do they call it the the brain that's the part of the brain that's not as evolved all of a sudden you come from a very evolved place and it's very hard to to really make any kind of mistake because you're living authentically you're being truthful you know then it's just how much how much are you okay with the status quo saying you're you might not be okay so Tell me a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to ask you some questions now that Please. might put you on the spot a little bit. Cause I, I'm so grateful that you shared your journey. Like, so it's so not only brave that you share about all of that, but that then to see how you have taken those pivotal points in your life and created, um, such good in the world as a result of them. So you've given meaning to those awful events and right. meaning to the intergenerational trauma that has been dealt in your hand up until now. And, and so now you're becoming breaking the shell of the, that encased you mm. becoming, and I never say we have become, but we're always becoming. Yes. So you're becoming a more and more authentic version of yourself. So tell me what does authenticity actually mean to you? What does the word authenticity mean to you? And it's, I think it's, there's so many layers and it's so complex. Um, but authenticity, authenticity is just, it's telling your, your truth, you know, and it's showing up to the best of your ability. Like, like we were talking about before, Pam, I was like, I didn't know I was going to need a root canal. Right. Yeah, but yeah. I, I knew that today was so important. Um, a, because you asked and I felt honored, but B, because I also, I, I want to embrace 
being authentic. It was, it took me so long to get here that mm-hmm. it's, it's almost a shame to put her back into her suitcase and tell her to. It's not to, almost a shame. That'd be a damn shame. Right? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so yeah. I think that it's so important that we, we, we embrace it and so that not only we can show it to our kids and to the world and our neighbors and our coworkers and anyone who will listen, but because there's, it's kind of like when I just asked anyone to stand up who's ever been affected by addiction mm-hmm. and it didn't have to be them in general, but look at the, look at the, the domino effect that ad- addiction has. Okay. So let's go from one, one extreme to the other. So addiction, but then if you live in your authentic self, look how we're connecting addiction away from uh, authentic. So if you're the more authentic you are, the less addiction you'll have. Do you Mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The more authentic you are, the more you can show up for your children. The more authentic you are, the better coworker you are. The more Mm -hmm. authentic you are, the more you can change the world. The Mm -hmm. more authentic you are, the more that you feel at peace with yourself. Mm -hmm. The more authentic you are, then you radiate and invite amazing people like yourself into your world because authenticity sees authenticity. Likewise, they go, I see you. It's like Avatar. Did we not love that movie? Yeah, and all yeah. the, the, the one saying out of that, which we are all so desperate for, is I see you. Mm-hmm. I see yeah. you. So you said something in there that I want to pull apart a little bit. You said speaking your truth. And here's something that I've come to know about myself. And I'm... Okay. Um, I. <laughs> it's kind of almost an, it's, it's not an embarrassing story, but it's like one of those things where you can look back on who you used to be and cringe. A right? little bit. Yeah. Like, well, about, it's like, look at the 80s hair. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> right, look at the 80s hair, but like in your personality. Yeah. Right. So, so you said, you know, speaking the truth, speaking your truth. But what we have to realize, I think, and what I've come to realize is there's my truth, there's your truth, and then there's the truth. Right. And my truth is changeable if I'm open and willing Mm. to realize that I'm malleable because there's things I believed wholeheartedly 10 years ago that I know not to be true now. Yes. But I would have argued that that's the truth. We have to distinguish between my truth. I can speak my truth from where I am right now with the experiences I've had up to now. And I'm open and willing to recognize that that truth could change for me over time. It's when we get so rigid and we Yes. Fight to the death for what we call the truth that we limit the ability to dive deeper into our authentic selves and to discern and discover and know that our truth is evolving all mm. the time. Well, see, and, but that's and, why you're the host, Pam. Thank you for uh, that. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Cause I just went on the, you know, show up and be authentic. But I, I, I do believe that because I can tell you, before my mom passed three years ago, there was some truths and I'll get one of them I'll share with you is that I believed harm reduction really worked. She was on this spectrum because she's a, she was a recovering addict that mm-hmm. harm reduction does not work for, in her words, mm-hmm. hard co- hardcore addicts and alcoholics. Mm-hmm. So we always had this little bit of a, a ruffle or, well, I, I call it, I was brought up in voice and choice. And then mm-hmm. I jokingly say I did the same for my son. And some days I want to pull his larynx out, but that's a different story. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, but you know, like, so, so that was what her truth was and it was very valid for her. And I know that a lot of uh, rec- folks in recovery live and die by it. And I completely agree, but I'll share with you prior to then I was, I worked in the downtown East side for 10 years. Right. And so I believed in harm reduction, worked in uh, women, violence and gangs for seven years in Surrey, believed harm reduction was it. I ran a methadone maintenance club um, uh, unit for women who were pregnant. So I had always, cause it was the gentler and easier and, um, more politically correct mm-hmm. uh, way to lean into something, if that makes right. sense. Okay. Yeah. For me, I'm not speaking for anybody else. Please, mm-hmm. please hear me on this. Then when she passed, even though she passed sober, I got into this deep thing of, you know, it's always this way, right? Well, maybe she was right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and God forgive me because like I was denying her experience. Yeah, yeah. And she was the professional and the one who knew in her own right. Do you know yeah. what I mean? As is anyone who has that addiction and, and goes down that path. But what I will say is that it took her leaving this earth for me to go there was something about that. And what was that push and pull? And 
how can I authentically come around? So what I can do is I can still honor that harm reduction is brilliant and keeps people alive. But what I can do is now that I'm a little wiser and a little older and a little more understanding and more flexible in what is truth, I can now say that maybe for a lot of folks, abstinence is what is necessary for them. Yeah. So I can hold both and 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 still walk the journey with so the human. And instead of yes. either. Yes. And now, instead of either. You know, I have this, I, I want to share a story about my son. Um, you know, he, he was in uh, heroin addiction for a long time, eventually fentanyl. And wow. he tells this story about, um, you know, he'd been on methadone many times. So, yeah. you know, necessary to get off of, of hard drugs at times. And and though they created a program in Surrey uh, where he was living for a time and it was uh, that they could go and get, basically get injected twice a day. The OATS um, program. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it, but not methadone or like actual morphine or yeah. hydromorphone or whatever. Yeah. It's and the so, IOTS program. Yeah. So they said to him, you know, you know, you could do this. And my son looked them straight in the eye and said, don't give up on me. Oh, <laughs> And, you know, that really changed my mind that this kid who had, he could have went there and just got high twice a day and lived his life, but he was still in there somewhere saying, don't give up on me. And he <gasps> said that to them. And I was in that moment, I knew there was hope. And oh it, my God. That just I love him and I don't life. even know him. Oh, he's pretty special. Yeah. Of course he is. He's yours. We're God damn it. <laughs> well, but, he, but I want to, you know, this, this brings back this quote that I love from Mark Twain. He said, it ain't ever what you don't know that gets you in trouble. It's what you know for sure that just ain't so. <laughs> oh, love it. <laughs> love it. You, okay. After this, you got to send me that by email. I love I will. that. I will. No, and that's true. And I, I, again, you know, we were, we, we walked beside them, but it wasn't completely their, our journey. Yeah. So, you know, I, I look back and I go, the audacity of me to tell her that reduction is going to work. Right. Like, what the fuck? Totally. It's like, I thought it was just back, my mother and not someone else. Right. Looking back and just cringing at, at ourselves. I know. But I think this is what it takes to be authentic. And I love, yes. I just love this conversation is lighting me up so much because I feel like it really is around, like, let's just keep seeking the truth and recognize yes. we never totally arrive there. There's always more. There's always a perspective and we can adjust and adapt and fill in our beliefs with right? new uh, views. We can it's when we stand rigidly in the old and the handed down and the, that we lose ourselves. Uh, you know, I, I was always told, you know, you show up, you tell the truth, you pay attention and you don't be attached to the results. Yeah. And I feel that this is how we have to be with our authentic selves. We just show up in all our glory, whatever that looks like, right? We, we ask for folks to make space to, for us and we make space for them as well. Mm -hmm. And then we celebrate in it and remember the moments and just stay present. And I believe the rest would work itself out. We would just have such a different generation and, and folks that we all, all we're doing here, whether it's being an addiction, being whatever, even the way that we go to go to work, we're all just asking, can we be accepted? Will you accept me today? So do you think it's, Rather than, I'm wondering if we change the question here. Okay. So we're looking for, can I be accepted? Okay. I want to flip that around. Please. And say that the access to that is probably, how can I work on accepting others? Ah, as they, okay. As they are and as they aren't. And in the practice of accepting others as they are and as they aren't, am I going to, then I, I think, I, I think as I'm yes. saying this out loud, that that's the pathway to accepting myself. I love it. I love it. Yes. I agree. And when we, when we accept ourselves and we accept others, then we're, our need to be accepted is not that looking for external validation. It's actually just yeah. our recognition that we're all connected. But see that I still got some work to do. That's why, because that's why I still said it that way. Right. Do you see what I mean? And mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay with that. Like well, that doesn't I'm bother glad. me. I just go, Oh, okay. I got to do some more work on that. As is, you were speaking, I started to wonder that, you know, just, right? and I'm, I'm always, I always think that for me, authenticity is like 
you know, when you're a little kid or you, or your kids are little and you, you pile them into a like layers to go outside to play in the snow. And then they're like in the full snow suit and they're like little abominable snowmen. They can't walk <laughs> anywhere. And I feel like that's, we pick up layers and layers and layers yes. of other people's beliefs that allow us to feel like we fit in or belong, but mm -hmm. fitting in Brene Brown says fitting in is the opposite of belonging. Absolutely. And I love um, her. And she's, and she's got, yeah, she's, she's got such a tap. She's, she's tapped into the pulse of what, what it yeah, is that's going she on. Is. And I and love so, how eloquent she is. So thank you for reminding me. She, you know, I, I think based on that, that it's kind of like we walk through life and it's not about, um, what do we need to add in? It's like, Oh, which, what layer can I take off now? And what layer can I take off now? Ah. What layer can I take off now? It's losing all the bits of not us and a remembering of the truth that we are all connected and we are all divine. Yes. Oh. And as Ed Milet says, that we were all born to do great things. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think also the comparisons, you know, mm -hmm. of just that, I don't know what your journey is. I love watching it. It's beautiful it, in all its glory. I'm sitting here going, I love the, I know Pam Rader and she's in my life and I'm in hers, but also then just allowing that. I don't know what your journey was. I don't know how you got there. I don't know what painful nights. And I know there were some of, of you coming into this full beauty that I see before me today. So why do I need to be comparison or jealous or anything except for I'm, I'm going to watch, I'm going to celebrate and I'm going to walk with you as long as you'll allow me. I'm going to share a really unpopular opinion that I have and you can tell me what you think. About Perfect. It. So we, we hear it all the time that life isn't happening to you. It's happening for you. And I say it's one step further. Fuck that. It's happening because of you. Absolutely. It's happening because of you and, yep. and people are so, uh, averse to taking ownership of their lives and, no. and really wanting to point the finger and even using trauma as a crutch to yep. not heal. Yep. And at some point we have to say, I'm, I'm the cause of all the, I'm creating this all and I can yep. be the creator of my healing yep. or my destruction. Absolutely. And I, and I, you know what, and I'll, I'll speak to that because I love it. Mm -hmm. I had, a, I could have gone down two paths. I could have mm -hmm. tried to tell people all about my yuckiness of all of the suicides and this and that and whatever, mm -hmm. or I could have gone down a, a huge path of destruction because I was mm -hmm. going to implode. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, what, human combust, I knew it. I knew it was going to happen if I didn't do one, one or two things. So I, I chose it. It was not popular. Mm -hmm. It was not even talked about. I was looked at as probably maybe, well, there's that crazy black lady that wants to talk about this all the time. No, that was the reason, but do you know what I mean? So, I, so just because it's unpopular and this is strange, but, and I love that the universe is moving towards this is that the unpopular is now becoming okay. And that's huge for us to move into. Well, it depends because, what crowd you're in. We're lucky true. that we move in crowds where we're interested, but yeah. there is still a great deal of, um, conformity yeah. and, um, um, confronting, uh, that, that happens, you know, you think about the political parties and Correct. All, all of these kinds of things that happen. And I always think of it as like the first floor of a building where everyone's living on and they can only see what's across the street. Right. And when you start to get curious and you start opening up to, yeah, maybe that's not the point of view that I share or whatever, but I'm interested in it and I could learn something about it. Yep. Then we move up to the second floor and we can see a little over top of the buildings. And yes. then eventually we get up to maybe the 17th floor and we can see for miles that there are many truths and that yes. there are many possibilities and many ways of living and seeing life. And we don't get so rigid. We, you see, I think the rigidity comes from our clinging to our, whatever identity we've created for ourselves. Right. And if someone has a different view than us, then it threatens our worldview there and therefore threatens our identity. And we come out fighting for it. But in that we get to stay living on the first floor of the building and never see anything else. Right. And, and what a travesty that is, 
Because right, if, yeah. if you don't travel and you don't see a different perspective, whoa. And and I'm not talking like you got to get in a plane. Sometimes yeah. just traveling to where on the internet when you see something. But, but just we need to, I'm hoping we stop doing so much of this and more of this, which is yeah. we're opening up to just say, oh, can I, can I entertain that idea? Is that interesting? Or just check it out. Be like you said, flexible yeah. in your, in your mind and your thought and your body as to there is a many, many different other perspectives and, and yeah. can you lean into some of them or can you not reject all of them? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think if we looked at ourselves as a work of art and we're just creating ourselves throughout our whole lives and we can try on lots of versions of us that maybe don't fit yep. and accept that that's part of the journey, yes. discovering who we're not is as important as discovering who we are. And then we you can should, do Pam, more. You need to say work. that again. You need to say that one more time. Discovering who we're not is as important as discovering who we are. Yes. And so we're going to make mistakes and things are going to feel yucky at times. And that's just, you know, no thorns, no roses. Those thorns mm. direct us to the path. Yes. So tell me a little bit about, because I want everybody to know about this project of yours, Hemi's Holistic Healing. Is that what, what yes. are you talking about? So yeah. it's Hemi's Holistic Healing Center Society. And mm -hmm. as you know, Pam, I came to you when it when I went to Community Futures and I went to business school and I was so excited. So Community Futures, I love them. They just gave us, me such a trajectory, but they only do for profit. So I took my nonprofit hat off, put it aside, even though that's all I really knew. Mm -hmm. And I went, okay, I'm going to start a corporation. So it was Hemi's Healing House, um, which is uh, an eight to bed eight to 10 bed um, recovery center, women recovering, helping women recover. And those who self-identify, indigenous, BIPOC, the LGBTQ family, you know, this is um, safe spaces for all races is how I look at it. Mm -hmm. um, and it's women empowering women to get out of recovery, to get into recovery. Mm -hmm. And and what that looks like is, yes, we're doing, of course, um, the, the natural 12 steps and, and all of the modalities that have worked, but we're going to take it a little bit deeper and do some, um, so some of them are on the edge modalities. Others are being much more um, embraced by mainstream. But what we're trying to do is that we know that recovery, all recovery, we must deal with the trauma first and then to remove the substance alcohol drugs whatever is much easier but we've got to uncover that so that's what we're looking at we're wanting to we're I'm birthing it right now to open in somewhere in Kelowna <laughs> I'm going to let the universe lead us mm -hmm. um, and we are uh, because of this we're now being seen and um, thanks to Anita and wow well, women wine and well-being we've just sort of jumped on this bandwagon with them and they've uh, um, allowed us to do the vitality that we did at Okanagan Lifestyle that Anita hosted. And then we're going to be doing wild. They've let me um, be, be able to share uh, Hemi's house there. So, um, and wild is women. Um, wild is the wine, women and well-being's big uh, yes, on the road event you. where all the chapters come together. And uh, um, Anita that she's speaking of is the fabulous Anita Parker, who is also yes. a generous, authentic soul. and. Uh, um, I love the work that you're doing in the world, but most, mostly like, I love all of your big heart for service, but mostly yeah. I love your voice. My friend, I love that you speak truth. I love that you fearlessly blaze a pathway for people like me to follow behind. And if I could be half as authentic as you are in my life, I would call my life a success. It's truly an honor to, to be here with you, to, to watch your journey I, I look forward to supporting your journey um, you. and, and honestly to, to asking for your support in, in my journey, because I think we got to hold each other up. And so, so thank you. I know we're time, but Pam, without, without trailblazers like you, there is no me because people just look at me and go, Oh my goodness. <laughs> so, so I believe that we're walking this journey together because one can, it seems like right now one cannot do it without the other. And I am in deep, I'm deeply humbled and deeply honored to be walking this path with you. 
Same with you. As Ram Das said, we're all just walking each other home and I couldn't ask for a better walking partner. <laughs> it's a great honor. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for everything that you do and for who you are. And um, I know that you will have inspired a lot of people through this conversation to start speaking their truth and what's important to them in life and to become um, a catalyst for others to do the same. Tell our listeners where they can find you to support Hemi's house. Oh, right. We have a website which just came up the other day. It's Hemi's Holistic. And we're also on Instagram. Yeah. And yeah. We'll post we that in the, in the link down below. So amazing. Thank you so much, Doria. Thank you, Pam. Oh, oh keep, keep shining bright.